Okay, it's recording now. Okay, okay. good. We'll get started. All right, hi everybody. Thank you for joining today's Jenkins online meetup. Our session today is on Jenkins in Google Summer of Code. We're focusing on the final project demos. My name is Alyssa Tong, and I'm uh, one of the org admins for Jenkins in GSOC 2023. Also on this webinar with me are other org admins, Jean-Marc Mason, Chris Stern, and Bruno Varakten. Um, some of our GSOC mentors are also on this webinar along with GSOC contributors whom you will get to meet shortly. Slide number two, please. Yep. So the Jenkins Online Meetup is a community-driven virtual platform. Our goal is to inform, transfer knowledge, and share all things Jenkins. We are always looking for speakers. So if you're um, interested in sharing your Jenkins story or having a compelling story, please do share with us via that last link um, on the screen. Slide three, please. Before we begin, a couple of housekeeping items. This session is being recorded. We will share the link on the Meetup page after the event. If you have questions, please put them in the chat window throughout the presentation. Our presenters and mentors will respond to them accordingly. And as always, the code of conduct is fully enforced here. If you're not sure what it is, it's simply being respectful and being kind to one another. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Jean-Marc to take it from here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I like the elephant or the code of conduct. Uh, here, the agenda for today is, as uh, Lisa introduced, we're first going to do a short overview of this year's uh, Google Summer of Code with Jenkins. We will then have uh, a 10, in, 10 minute presentation of the current state of all the projects with a demo by the contributors where they will share uh, their experience. At the end of each uh, presentation, we'll leave a couple of minutes, five minutes for questions, comments. Uh, and when the four presentations are uh, completed, if we still have some time over, uh, we can answer questions. Uh, should we run out of time for that, please ask your question on the various channels that were mentioned uh, uh, in the beginning. We will monitor them after the presentation. So this year's uh, uh, Jenkins, uh, the Google Summer of Code at Jenkins, it's the seventh year that we're participating. We had uh, four, four projects running, four new contributors and a lot of mentors uh, 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 that invested time to, as a team to complete uh, all these projects. So we had one project it was dealing with the plugin modernize the GitLab plugin modernization. Uh, another one was dealing with uh, adding uh, additional probes to the plugin health score. Uh, we also had uh, building Jenkins IO, our main um, uh, information site, uh, with alternative tools than the existing ones. And last and not least, uh, we had also we had also a project about uh, preparing some quick starts, Docker-based quick starts for Jenkins uh, environment. Uh, all the projects are listed on the below uh, link where you can see all the documentation and notes for each project. So here are the contributors. I fear that some of the pictures are a little bit dated. So some, some uh, refresh will be required there. So we had uh, Jack uh part of uh, the adventure, uh, Harsh, Bandit, and Ashutosh, all four uh, uh, joined from uh, India uh, on, 
on this year's Jenkins, uh, Jenkins Google Summer of Code. So we're going to start with the project presentations. Um, remember, try to stick with 10 minutes per presentation. First one on the row is Ashutosh uh, with a Jenkins based, a Docker based Jenkins quick start uh, example. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashutosh. My project is Docker based Jenkins quick start examples, as John Mark said. And let's start with the presentation. Next slide, please. Okay, let's see what's the problem this project aims to solve. Next slide, please. Let me paint a picture for you guys. Let's say there is a, a new uh, Jenkins uh, user who wants to experience Jenkins for the first time with Docker. Let's see what uh, uh, the user's first experience of Jenkins will look like right now. First, they'll have to create a Docker network with a Docker network command. Then they'll have to use this scary looking command with a lot of arguments to create a uh, Docker in Docker uh, container. Next slide, please. Then they'll have to build a custom uh, Docker image with a Docker file uh, with this command, after which they'll need to run that uh, custom image with uh, this many arguments. Uh, then an obvious one of which is that it's complex and intimidating steps, uh, which can be a hindrance for uh, beginner, uh, beginner users. And another thing is that we use the same setup in the tutorials that are designed for beginner uh, beginner users to learn Jenkins. And so it's a complex thing for in that because we need to create uh, the make the barrier to entry to Jenkins as low as possible because they're here to learn about Jenkins, not how difficult Docker can be. And another part is uh, that the setup comes with its, its own security risks uh, with Docker and Docker. Uh, which we like to avoid. So the main goal of the project is to simplify the user experience, especially for the beginner users. Next slide, please. No. Okay, let's see what we did in the first phase of the GSOC. During first phase, we aim to accomplish this objective using scripts. We developed uh, Jenkins init script, uh, Jenkins uh, teardown script uh, to initiate and stop the container setup. Uh, we are using multi-container setup with Docker Compose. Uh, for controller and, and an agent. And we've uh, created another script for uh, generating SSH keys and another for cloning and forking the repository uh, for the tutorials. Uh, and we also uh, integrated the tutorials in the script itself uh, so that we can run them with the keyword uh, because the tutorials need custom uh, Jenkins agent to run. Uh, so we have included that in the script itself. Next slide, please. Okay, let's see what we accomplished in the phase two. Okay, so uh, during phase two, our main uh, main uh, thing we needed to do was uh, incorporate Windows in, in the project because the script we created before were not compatible with Windows without WSL. So that's where Docker Compose profiles came into the picture and uh, turned out to be the perfect solution for us because it lets us uh, do the uh, keep the same format we were using before of uh, using a keyword after the, after the command so if before uh, user need to run jenkins in it then the maven keyboard for maven tutorial now they'll use docker compose up with the maven uh, keyword to run the maven tutorial another part was integrating uh, the remaining tutorials which includes uh, python uh, python tutorial node tutorial and multi branch pipeline tutorial uh, with the previous maven tutorial and we are also uh, not using Docker in Docker in any tutorial now. So that's a plus. And another big part of the project was uh, automated testing, which introduced me to GitHub Actions. I, I didn't know GitHub Actions before, so I needed to learn it. And now we are using GitHub Actions to uh, test all the Docker Compose files and uh, upload the Docker images to the Docker Hub and updating the plugins and testing all the tutorials uh, by try running them. Next slide, please. And yes, everything works with Gitpod with just a click. Next slide, please. Okay, let's see in a demo if everything I've talked about actually works. Should I share Alisa. my screen? Yeah, Alisa, 
Can you do the necessary voodoo? Um, so you just stop sharing your screen, John Mark. Okay. Done. There we go. Can you see me? My screen? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, so this is the Git pod button. This is the repository that we are using. You can check it out. And get, while Git pod space has uh, been creating, let me show you the documentation that is present right now. So this is the Python tutorial we'll perform today. Here, to, here it's just the setup for Docker with Jenkins. So it's quite complicated as you can see. Okay, Git pod is starting. And another thing is, let me explain you the uh, tutorial itself. In tutorial, we need to fork and clone this repository, which I've already done, and push a Jenkins file to it, uh, which I've already done. So we'll just need to copy this link. Okay, get part is taking some time. It's called the demo effect. <laughs> It's taking unusually long. Okay, this one is ready. So we'll do okay, it's caps Docker compose of T and we'll do Python. Python is the keyword for the Python tutorial. And it's pulling the images. Right now we are using the pre-built uh, images in our Tutorial. So this is the only command that someone who wants yes. to try out the tutorial needs to type. Yes. Uh, before it, before it was uh, this whole. Now it's only Docker Compose up with the name of the tutorial. Okay, Jenkins is starting. Let's open the field view. And we also intend to uh, add a GitHub uh, Git pod uh, button that uh, users can just one click and uh, use Jenkins. Okay, let's log in. Okay, one well, it's caps. We uh, we added a, uh, a simple demo job in it. Let's create the tutorial. We are using multi-branch pipeline for all the tutorials from now on. Let's add the source. Source is the link for the repository. It's uh, it's my personal repository, which I've forked and cloned. So it will scan for branches. It should only find one branch. Okay, it should run any second now. As you can see, it's running on the agent container and not the controller. And we have also added a pipeline graph view plugin uh, and instead of Blue Ocean plugin since it's been deprecated. So this is the closest we got to that. So as you can see, it's completed successfully okay i'll stop my screen now i'm going to go ahead and share the presentation again yes, you try yes. On this one? yeah okay here we go next slide my time is completed yes Why? Something okay there okay and let's see what i learned during the sock as you can see there's a lot of things uh, which includes uh, get github best practices github actions how to write docker compose files how to write shell scripts and so on many things 
Next slide, please. Okay, let's see what's next for the project. Uh, we intend to uh, transition from GitHub Actions to ci.jenkins.io. Uh, uh, we are in talks with Infra team right now for doing that. After which we'll be able to uh, fully integrate this into uh, our project into Jenkins.io. And we hope to do it before October so we can incorporate uh, the repository into Hectoberfest with good first issue to engage beginner contributors too. And uh, as a stretch goal, we might expand the project with additional tutorials in the future. Next slide, please. Yeah. That's also a good goal for people that want to participate to Octoberfest. Okay, go ahead. And I'd like to thank my mentors, John, Mark, Bruno, and Vivianto, especially for teaching me and helping me learn so many new things, and Jenkins community for their support. Next slide, please. Okay, okay if you guys have you. any questions. You managed to do the demonstration presentation 10 minutes. This yes, is great. I've I've practiced it before. Uh, are there questions? Uh, I've seen QA. Uh, Bruno, can you eventually? Yes, of, of course. Uh, so an anonymous attendee asked, uh, will we have access to the recording session afterwards? And the answer is yes, of course. Uh, Lisa, I think it will be part of the um, uh, meetup page uh, right. later on. Yeah, yes. and I guess there will be a post on communityjenkins.io, maybe? E, on Jenkins, it will be on, um, yes, communityjenkins.io, yes. It'll be there as well. Thank you. And chance. then we have Aaron Conaway uh, who asked, how can others submit tutorials to include? Uh-huh. Uh, I could answer live, but I will do it first, and then Ashutosh, maybe you'll say something about that. Um, we have a Gitter channel just about this project, so I guess this would be the right place to ask, or it could be on community.jenkins.io, or Ashutosh. Um, you can uh, directly ask on GitHub itself. Uh, in the GitHub repository, you can cre create an issue. Uh, and Gitter channel, I think Gitter channel will be the best for suggesting new tutorials. Yeah, let me try to find the link and post it into I, the answer. Okay. Uh, I think it's mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. I'm not sure though. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, are there other questions? I'm not used to that interface here. Let's see the chat. I'm not uh, seeing any other questions. No, okay. Uh, I have a question to Ashutosh. Uh, what was your general experience of Google Summer of Code? Was it scary, exciting, tiring, exhilarating? So choose a word and, and tell us what was your experience? It was all of them, actually. At some <laughs> point, it, it was scary, some point, it was. Yeah, it was all of oh. them. It was a really good journey and I enjoyed it very much. Good, great. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for the work done. Uh, I see it as a great simplification so that people can immediately start experimenting uh, with, uh, with Jenkins and have everything set up and look for the infrastructure after that. Ashutosh, thank you very much for your participation, for your presentation and uh, answering the various uh, questions. So we'll move thank to you. the next presenter. And the next presenter is uh, Vandit. Uh, Vandit, who is going to tell us about uh, what he did to be able to build Jenkins IO with alternative tools. Floor is yours. I think you're you're on mute, Vandy. We can't hear you. No, no, he has a sound problem. Oh. He can try with hand signals, but it will not work. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, now it works. Great. Yeah. Sorry for the problem. Hello, everyone. Go my ahead, Vandy. Is... Hello, everyone. My name is Vandit Singh, and I'm the selected GSOC contributor for this project. And we are rebuilding Jenkins.io with alternative tools. 
Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Oops. Oh, so something about me. Uh, my name is Vandit Singh. I'm from India. I'm currently pursuing pursuing computer science. Uh, and I have an interest in many technologies, and I love building stuff. I love open source because it's cool and it will take over proprietary software in the near future. And I love connecting with strangers and working with them. Next slide, please. So let's talk about what the project is about. So the project is about rebuilding Jenkins IO. But so the first question that comes to someone's mind is why are we rebuilding it? So uh, next slide, please. So we we need to know something about uh, Austruct and Jenkins.io and their relationship. So Austruct was the static site generator that was used to uh, create and de uh, develop Jenkins.io, but it has been uh, it has been totally under maintained since last two years. And people from Jenkins community are helping at, in helping it uh, helping it and maintaining it. So since it is uh, really under maintained, so we are, we it was a good move to move to something new which is maintained, which will not break in the near future. Also, Jenkins.io's documentation required versioning, and versioning, and we couldn't we, we could not do that with Austruct. So we had to so we had to move to a new tool that could help us in versioning documentation uh, out of the box. Next slide, please. So this is the table of content about the things that you are going to. I have completed the project description. Uh, next slide, please. I think we. I'll just go on and we'll see. So we'll be using Entora and Gatsby to rebuild Jenkins.io. So, so uh, if you are watching this presentation, you will get this question in your mind that why are we using Entora and why are we using Gatsby to re only these two tools to rebuild Jenkins.io. So next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Yep. So we are using we are using Entora because it implements versioning out of the box, and the main major part of the Jenkins.io consists of documentation that is used by users and developers throughout the world. So we wanted it to be versioned because in some part in some versions of Jenkins.io you don't have some features, but in some versions you have something. So it was it was a needed feature that everybody wanted. And uh, Entora uses ASCIIDoc files to serve the site pages, and we have ASCIIDoc files, a lot of ASCIIDoc files on Jenkins.io for the uh, documentation. Then we are using Gatsby. The we are using Gatsby because uh, it has really fast builds. It's a secure, and uh, we we want it. We are using Gatsby only for the blog section and some pages, some single pages, because uh, like, and since Gatsby uses GraphQL. Uh, so that was also a plus point for us because we wanted to, we wanted it to be fast to, uh, faster than before. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the achieved milestones we have done till now are we uh, we have completed the documentation site with Entora that you will see in the demo. We we are still working in on the blogs like we have completed it, but we still have the blogs milestone consists of some two to three more pages, like the landing page, the download page, the change log page. We are still working on them and it, they will be done in the near future before the code, before the extended coding period ends. So some, some pages will be done by 20 September. That is what we are, that is the upper limit that uh, we have a thought of. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so I'll show you what I have done because I won't I won't believe some if someone says that he has done that he or she has done this this this. Okay. So normally, normally you can start sharing your screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Awesome. We don't hear you anymore, Bandit. You touched the wrong button. Uh, can you hear me now? Now it works. Now it works. I don't know what's happening, but let's go. So uh, we, we we are using Entora for the versioning, and so you you can see here that we have we we can switch between versions. Currently, these are the demo versions because versioning will be implemented from now on. From now on, every time a new LTS release uh, that is uh, released after uh, I guess every twelve four weeks. So. 
we will have we will have a new version and you can you would be able to see in the user documentation if something is is was this something is added in the new version or uh, so or that would be with the help of this drop down uh and then we have the sidebar we have we have focused on the ui and ux so to uh, increase increase the ui user experience of the users of jenkins.io so user documentation is versioned another documentation that is really important was developer documentation which is non version because uh, when you are, when you are maintaining source code you don't you don't want to you you get the uh, history on github so you don't need to have it on the site and it is not uh, it is not needed so we have a developer documentation which is not version when so when something which is non version you won't see the drop down and uh, you can also you can also switch from here uh, to you can switch also switch from here to the pages that are versioned and not also to access different pages of jenkins.io you can you can access this drop down and and access them so this this was all for this was all for the uh, entora site if if then we come to the gatsby site that i created uh, for the blogs is this currently it is following the theme and feel of jenkins blogs that continuous blogs so uh, it, it it we will st we still have to add the author's name and their links and if you go inside one of these we still have to style we will still have to style some parts of the inside blog and add the author images and the in and if you go down on jenkins.io you have the about the author section where you will have a small description of the author and their links we still have to add that uh, from here you would go you can access the blogs page in the near future uh, you can access the authors page in the near future uh, and if i just go to authors Yeah, so here's currently we are using a, demo, a dummy image right now, but uh, when the project will be completed, you will have uh, will have the submitted photo of the contributors that contribute to the blog. So, uh, this this would be the this would be the con community uh, or blog contributors page, and you you can you can access them, but they don't have anything right now because because we are still we are we are still working on the authors six side of things on blog. Uh, after that, after that, we are still working on the landing pages, and they are still not yet to be shown and completed. So that was all from my side for the demo. I'll stop my share sharing. Okay. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. You can hear me, right? You can hear me, right? Yes, it works. So. Okay. Next slide, please. There we are. Okay, so when you are working on a project, there is a definite, there is a possibility that you may not uh, face any problems. What we did, so when before before uh, in the first phase, we asked the community what they thought about the project structure and the plan, and it was suggested that we use Strapi with Gatsby for the backend uh, as a CMS. But we tried we tried using it, but and it was not. Uh, it was not uh, okay with the infra team and as uh, that would be server side rendering it was it would use server side rendering and that would take a lot of resources so that that was the one of the issue using strapi with gatsby uh, another thing was there uh, on in the in the so site you would see many links and how ostruct used links for linking is completely different than how entora does it so we had to automate we had i had to write scripts for it and uh, chris helped me a lot with it so we work, we fixed the interpage linking that too. Then, uh, then we, we went to the data table API on some pages. We have the data table API that fetches tables from table data from data table API for Jenkins. Uh, that was not working and it was using Ruby. So that is not something I'm very good with. So Chris Tan really helped me. He's my mentor. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, after the project, I have after the project to till this phase, I have some key takeaways that I need to share with people so they can uh, get they can they can just learn it. So uh, Jenkins.io is a really large code base uh, of the Jenkins.io. So migrating that was uh, we really needed a, a lot of planning and uh, and after the planning, you would have to uh, see 
to the execution is going well too so um, the my mentors really helped me in planning of things how to do things so that that uh, thank you mentors for thank you my men thank i'm thanking my mentors for that another thing uh, i learned from was that i learned a lot of uh, i lot about entora gatsby graphql i lot a lot of lot of scripts i uh, learned a, a lot about regular expressions while doing that also i have realized the importance of community feedback as well because community knows a lot people in community are really great developers and they know a lot so they really help me in expanding my horizon and think about other things too next slide please uh, so thank you for the, uh, so you can you can connect so you can connect and learn more about the project from the github channel and uh, the github link is there and the icons i stole from ashutosh uh, pre presentation so uh, that was all from my side do you have any questions okay we're going to see thank you very much for your presentation demo um Randit, i'm going to stop sharing here are there any questions so for the time being i can't see any question directly linked to vandit's presentation but hey there is a more general global uh, question okay um vandit in a short short question is why did you need extended uh, uh coding period why did we have to extend and then can um, you explain that in a couple yeah. of words yeah, when we experimented with Strapi, uh, that took up a lot of times around two to three weeks. So uh, if we didn't have to work with Strapi, it would have been completed by now. But uh, it was a great, really great option suggested by the community and the developers in it. So we had to try it out. So that was that ate up some time. So that's why I had to extend my uh, period to complete the project. And you had also some school related constraints during yeah, the yeah. summer and so and yeah, you need it to balance yep that okay listening if there are questions otherwise i have another one bruno you chime in if we we have um the only question we had was not directly linked as i said it was from bed the Bedi Gupta who was asking, I'm completely new here and I want if I wanted to get into how and what things should I have to know. The thing is, I don't know if this is Jenkins related or GSOC for Jenkins related. So if it's for Jenkins, uh, I like your image, the one you use uh, most regularly, Jean-Marc, which is build your Jenkins muscles. So the thing is, you have to start somewhere. You have to know more about the Jenkins uh, community, the Jenkins project and so on. So most of the things you should do is talk with people, discuss on one of the matrix um, channel, for example, the uh, Jenkins CI newcomer contributors, the place to be when you start. Um, there is also a page on Jenkins.io, which is Jenkins.io slash participate, which will list a few ways of participating in Jenkins. It's not always code. It can be participating in the forum, uh, writing documentation, writing blog posts, uh, participating in meetings, for example, giving your feedback as an end user, for example, lots of ways to participate in Jenkins and Oktoberfest is just around the corner. So maybe have a look on issues tagged with, what is it, John Mark? Uh, good first issue or something like that? Good first uh, issues. And we're going yeah. to explain that more in detail. Stay tuned for that. And I have a, la a last question to Vandit, otherwise we're going to run. Yeah, go ahead. Vandit, how did you feel with uh, Google Summer Code? I like the, this question. The same question okay. asked to Ashutosh. Can you tell us in a few words what was and what you would like to share with the people that will follow you? Okay, so when I started my project, I was a bit scared. I was a bit. It, I was a bit. Uh, I don't know. I was. I was. It was scary. It, the experience was scary when you are starting something. So because I didn't know anything about Endora, I didn't know anything about Gatsby. I didn't. I didn't even knew about GraphQL that I used. So after, but when you dive in into things, when you just start things, uh, it, it slows down, things get easier and, and easier and you start and you have something to showcase in 
two demos that you have over the summer so it it was a really nice experience and i really loved the journey and so you would also recommend people to start preparing and compete for gsoc yeah i would definitely recommend that you start with jenkins because it is a really great community we have really empathetic people uh, in the forum in the community so it is a really great place to start if you are planning for gsoc 24 okay good thank you for the kind words and uh, open source is a great way to complement uh, what you learn at school it gives you practical experience okay thank you i'm uh, i'm slowly getting uh, through the different presentation the third presentation we have now is harsh uh, harsh worked on the gitlab plugin modernization and quite some some work to do there the floor is yours i'm not sharing my screen yeah, I think the slides are not shared yet. Yeah, agreed. Are they okay now? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So hi there. Warm greetings wherever you are. This is the final presentation for the GitLab plugin modernization project. I am Harsh and my mentors are Mark, Basil, Chris, and Freyam. Next slide, please. So a bit more about me, my interests lie in a lot of uh, weird computer science fields like cloud native, com uh, cloud native technologies and modular blockchains and whatnot. And I'm also interested in weird non-technical fields like economic philosophies and I love reading books whenever I get some free time. I'm currently in my sophomore year uh, at Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur. And I started contributing to Jenkins in my freshman year from February 2023 and I am hooked since then. So if you want, you can check me out on Twitter and also my GitHub. Next slide, please. So yeah, about the project. So GitLab is a modern DevSecOps tools, a tool which is quite fast growing in nature and mark my words, it, it grows really fast. So GitLab, Gen, uh, Jenkins GitLab plugin provides a seamless integration of GitLab with Jenkins, but unfortunately it was not able to keep up with GitLab's pace of evolution over the past years. Thus, GitLab plugin modernization project was very much required, and we migrated the plugin from old REST Easy library to GitLab for J API. And this was particularly useful because the migration fairly reduced the maintenance burden that we were going to have later if we would have used the REST Easy. Made the plugin much more lightweight because GitLab for J abstracted away a lot of external dependencies that REST Easy was forcing us to have. It improved the consistency with all the other Jenkins plugins and also the other GitLab related plugins. And it also improved the documentation quite a lot for anyone who's going to contribute to the GitLab plugin again. So let me brief you with my journey in the community. So next slide, please. Okay, so my journey was a adventurous one to say the least. I started contributing to Jenkins when I just had around one to two months of programming experience in Java. And from a, being a very curious newbie kid to now being a maintainer of the GitLab plugin, I think, I think I've come in a very, very long way. I learned a lot of technical and as well as non-technical things. Technical things like Git, GitHub, and most importantly, GitLab, CI, CDs, and whatnot. Extensive debugging, and even inside the Docker containers, I developed more stronger programming concepts of Java and object-oriented programming. I learned about Docker-based functional testing. I learned about proxies and Nginx proxies, Apache web servers and whatnot. I learned about REST, AC, REST, uh, REST APIs, HTTP requests, with multi multitudes of networking concepts. I learned about planning and executing a project end to end, which I think is the most important thing that I learned out of the project. Keeping in mind the maintenance over the long term, I was I learned about UML diagrams and whatnot to make the planning happen. And I would really, really thank Jenkins community for providing me this opportunity as it helped me learn a lot of things in a very short amount of time. Next slide, please. So uh, we wanted the migration to be like magic, but uh, unfortunately it's not. I emphasized GitLab grows very fast. So it has the 
plugin used used to support version 3 and version 4 but as gitlab has evolved we are going to drop the support for version 3 as gitlab is not supporting version 3 right now and this version 4 will only be supported by the plugin once the plugin is released also gitlab 16 included some breaking changes that we will have to tackle because uh, and it's a particularly different uh, difficult situation to tackle right now so that's why we are still working on it but um, we are not accelerating our work because we want to take our time to make sure the plugin is tested extremely well if, with lower jenkins version as well and we'll also have to make sure that the plugin is compatible with older gitlab versions which is quite a far-fetched goal yet so we are working on that for using the modernized plugin the minimum jenkins version will be 2.387.3 so next slide please okay so let me show you what this plugin can do should be able to share a screen now yeah is it visible not yet not yet okay Yeah, is it visible Start. now? I think it should yes, be. Yes, it Start works. showing. Yep. Okay, so I've already set up set up my Jenkins container, and I am using the production GitLab server. So I'll be committing a change, like some weird things that I'll be doing for, and let's just commit it. I've set up a freestyle job in my Jenkins instance, and yeah, this things are committed. And the GitLab sample job is triggered. So it will be working. And let's see the pending right now. Yeah. So let's see the console output. It's taking a bit of time. Okay, I had a yeah. I had a lot of things. That's fine. It's working a bit. Yep. So it's a success. And let's see the changes. The changes show the commit that I made in my GitLab repository. So yeah, that was about the demo. It works perfectly well. Some things are missing, like uh, Changma, can you share the slide again? Yep. should start showing some, yeah so some things have to be worked upon again like we are currently doing the interactive testing a bit more so that we can be sure that the plugin once released is working the way it should be yeah if you no next slide please yeah so if you are more curious about the project it seems to be working right so you can learn more about the project on the project page you can join us for the project discussions on the GitHub channel you can see the project notes and you, if, if you want to refer to the project architecture, how the architecture of the GitLab plugin changed due to the change in the library, it was a major one. So you can check the project meetings as well as the recordings. If you want to see the code, file an issue, or if you have any requests, you can just go to GitHub repository, repository link and just file an issue. Next slide, please. So thank you very, very much, especially to my lovely mentors, the supportive community, to the org admins, and for your patience. Next slide, please. So if you have any questions, you can ask right now. It's the perfect opportunity. Don't shy away. Okay, good. Are there any None that questions I can see. showing here? No? No, not for the time being. So Harsh, same question as for the others. What, we, what was your feeling? You already explained a few things. You learned a lot uh, in that. And uh, I, I love the journey uh, analogy. How was your feeling? How I, And would you recommend others doing it? Some things in life, you just have to experience. The words don't match the expectations, actually. So or contributing to open source is one such thing. Like If you experience the warmth of the community that you get to experience once you start contributing to open source, you you will understand what I meant when you when you hear me. But in if if you want to 
get it in one word it was simply adventurous like it was scary it was great and it it, it requires a lot of planning a lot of help by mentors without them i don't think so you, you will be able to get up to the speed and a lot of support given by the community and a very warm environment for you to nourish yourself to learn a lot of things not e- like contributing to jenkins is going to help you in ways you don't even know like i also contribute to other open source communities and it has helped me a lot because it has made me a, quite a fearless person like i can simply dive into the code because code base because i have managed and debugged like specifically debugged so many libraries and so many things that i am specifically fearless about it so it will help you make your mindset a bit stronger and focus on the word building the muscle it is actually very important once you build the muscle for one open source project you are going to have that muscle memory for almost all the open source projects so you will be easily able to contribute if you just put in the time so i i right. really emphasize people to contribute to open source hacktober fest is really like coming soon so simply contribute it's going to be fun of an experience and google summer of code is great it, but don't take it as uh, take it as a competition specifically like don't take google summer of code as a competition it is a very beautiful thing because even if you don't get selected you are going to learn a lot of things a lot of things i i have a small question before giving the word to jakruti who is who is uh, waiting for for her part but just I remember that when we had the first discussions, what GSOC was and, and so on, I compared it to mountaineering. Yeah. The adventure of mountaineering, where you need to train, where you need to, in, in, you, there are a lot of dimensions in it. So there is also, you need somebody to help you. You need to rely on your, was that, that analogy correct? I've seen some heads nodding. Uh, there was is is that something that reflects what it is it, it's kind of a snowy mountain right like even when you start climbing the mountain it, the rocks are rugged and you just have to put a lot of effort just to get started on where the hell should i have get my first mm-hmm. commit and once mm-hmm. you start going it feels very smooth but once you once you get on the top it can get slippery and it can get slippery because either you planned wrong like one that happened it happened with one that right he tried stuff and he failed so it can get slippery another thing is you have to be ready constantly to put efforts until and unless you reach at the top not to slack off in between like it it just happens motivation goes down after the coding phase one a bit and then you have to pick it up again and that's where mentors come into the play they help you a lot okay so with this something we may may eventually come back uh, one of the summary i made here it's a great adventure it requires work and it requires a lot of uh, dedication uh, to do uh, so um i i've seen there is a question uh, there i will first want to have jakruti make her presentation and um uh, then we'll come back to more uh, general uh, presentation so jakruti you're still on mute Yes, how little. So this is your presentation. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah. I think I should take the control of the screen. Say that again. Yeah, I mean I should take the control of the screen because I do not have a demo to demonstrate. Oh yeah, fine. Well, well Jamar can um can uh, switch stop the, share. The slides. And so you can share your screen. So I've shared my screen now. Yes, we can see Great, it. Great, and we're seeing it. Okay. So hello, everyone. I'm Jagruti. And my project for GSOC 2023 is adding probes to plugin health score system. My mentors are Adrian, Antoine, Viraj, Jay, and Pierre. So the agenda of this presentation would be, I'll start with uh, telling something a little about myself, then I will tell about my project. I will also say, why did I pick this project? What did I work in the past three months? What did I learn? And the future plans for open source contribution. So I have a full-time job. I'm a senior product engineer. I have a few years of experience under me. I started contributing to open source project in last year, 2022. 
I was afraid of not developing new skills and getting stagnant at work. So I'm grateful for the community to be giving me an opportunity and also to my mentors for guiding me. So what is Plugin Health Score project all about? This is actually a system that uh, rates the different plugins based on what good practices they follow defined by the community. We have probes and probes are nothing but uh, different kind of system that collect data about each plugin. Probe con computes the score, the score of the plugin, and then we rate the plugin. A plugin that has a higher quality is given higher score, and a plugin that is obsolete is given a lower score. So why did I pick this project? When I uh, started to prepare for GS of my proposal, I actually was looking to strengthen the skills that I already have. And this project was the correct fit for me because it was in core Java and I already do work in Java. So that is why I picked this project. Also, when I was asking questions, discussing things with community, uh, they were really helpful to me. They solved all my doubts and I was getting a deeper understanding of the project. I also really wanted to learn some class design and all these opportunities were provided to me by the project. In the first part of GSOC, I worked on three different probes. The first probe was used to detect the unreleased production changes that have not been published yet. The second one detected the third party repositories that are being used by the plugins. And the third probe that I had worked on actually detected that the GitHub actions do have the specifications provided by the check in security team and they are executed in each of the plugins. This is the first probe that I started with, the second part of GSOC. Uh, the Renovate probe is actually nothing but a bot and Jenkins community encourages uh, us to implement and use bots like Dependent and Renovate to automate the dependency update. It is important that not just we use the bots, but we also take care of the plugin, of the pull request that they the challenges I faced and the things that I learned was code refactoring, which is really important in the contribution. I the challenge the major challenge was to avoid code duplication and also to write a readable and maintainable code. The current status of this, uh, PR is that it is merged. Okay, so this is another exciting probe that I had worked on. It did make me scratch my head a lot. This is number of open issues probe. This probe actually uh, just uh, what it does is actually calculates the number of open issues open in uh, GitHub and Jira. These are the two issue trackers that are used in the plugins. It is important to know the number of issues open because if there are a lot of issues open in a plugin, it might mean that a plugin needs maintenance or it is inactive or dead. The challenges were uh, to avoid a lot of code duplication and getting the correct level of factorization in the code because as both the plugins, sorry, as both the issue trackers, GitHub and Jira, they used the same details. We had to get the same details, but the API and the libraries used to fetch these details were different. The importance of this probe is it tells you that, okay, this uh, some have a lot of issues, so maybe they require adoption or they have more number of active users, so they require more contribution. The current status of this probe is that it is under review. We have completed the functionality, but we are trying to make it more maintainable and future. Okay, so incremental build detection probe. Uh, as per what I have understood is that to build parallel development components is actually a little burdensome. So this is actually a tool that aids in the development. It does not really deploy all the modules at a time. It really deploys the modules that are affected by new commits. Okay, so this was a completely new thing that I got to know that is actually implemented in the plugins. So I first had to understand it and then identify how to correctly actually read, uh, to correctly collect the data from the plugins in my probe. So this probe is also one of the merged probes. The next probe was to detecting deprecate JSR 305 imports in the probe. This is nothing, uh, but JSR is actually a Java specification request, which uh, has different kinds of uh, request uh, libraries, you can say. Uh, so what we use in the plugins is non-null and check for null annotations. 
The thing is, these annotations have actually been deprecated since 2016, and they are not maintained anymore. So it is not at all recommended to use these annotations. So this probe actually highlights and identifies that okay, your plugin this is citation, and you might need to change it. This is also one of the merged probes. This is a quick visualization of what I actually did during the GSOC period or uh, for the three to four months. When I started the project, it had 14 existing probes and I added a seven more. So the total count of the probes that a project now has is uh, 21. Other things that I worked on along, along, building, along with building new probes is um, working on the bug fixes. This uh, bug fix, one of the bug fix was an XCM link validation probe, where I have to take care of the link had some difficulties in the regular expression. So I wrote blogs for almost each of my probe. And there is a new prototype that we are building to generate effective uh, form files. This is what I'm working on right now. My future plans include to work on the effective form service and maybe maintain it in future. I want to be as active as possible in the community and uh, there are different repositories in Jenkins that I have not explored yet. I would like to explore them as well and maybe mentor new contributors. So what did I learn in open source? There are a lot of things to learn, but the most important thing is the communication part. As we all know that open source really relies on written communication on communication channels like Gitter, Slack, or maybe commenting on your GitHub requests. So it is important that uh, our communication is clear. It is always encouraged. I mean, I was always encouraged by mentors and loyalty admins to be autonomous. This is uh, really important. You should understand the topics and research them on your own before asking a lot of uh, questions. It is also important that we write readable and maintainable code because my mentors always said that maybe uh, you are contributing now, but you might not be the same maintainer in future. So you should always write Java docs and come the code for better documentation in the future. It is also important that uh, how we handle criticism. I remember there was an instance where I almost had to work, uh, redo my 60-70% of the code. Uh, which was number of open issues group because I had picked a uh, incorrect class design. So it is important that we take it positively and understand where it is coming from, why mentors are saying what they are saying, and to take the correct steps to implement them. Also, there was another instance where uh, one of the members of the community just uh, commented on my probe that I never knew before that I should pick this approach, and this approach might not give desired results to my probe. So, okay, so I had. Uh, I just I simply went ahead and implemented whatever the member was saying instead of like uh, really arguing or anything like that. Even though I did not really understand completely why the, they're making that particular point, I just understood partially, but I did went ahead and collaborated. The next thing is I also learned new approaches. Like one of the things I learned to think about is how to think of test cases before starting to code. This is something new, which I had never done before. It was suggested by mentors strongly that I should start with test cases and then actually write the code. Okay, so if I have to start with open source contributor as a new contributor like uh, last year, like I did, I would just tell myself is to not be afraid of uh, afraid of the humongous project and don't let impost imposter syndrome win. Do not think that, okay, these people are more experienced or more experienced than me or better than me. This is not really the case. Everyone has to start somewhere. So start with whatever you understand. Not be afraid to comment. Not be afraid to ask questions. GSOC is just a journey. It is not the end. It's just a beginning where you can get guidance and mentorship to start to contribute in open source projects. But there are a number of projects and a lot of things that you can do in open source. It is all about the community. Community is something that you have to be interdependent with. Most of the answers, question, and interaction you will have is always with the community. So it is important that you are nice and respectful to them. Okay, so that was all from my side, and I'm now open to taking questions. Okay, uh, I see a first question from uh, Ulrich Hafner. Um, are the results of the probes already integrated in our plugin page or how can I create 
uh, how can I create? So let's first answer that question. Jakruti, are the, the probes already available and accounted for? Not really. All the probes are not yet rated and not implemented in the scoring system because my mentors told me that they are doing a major refactoring. So in the last meeting, Aiden told me that it will be done in a week or so. There are some changes in the, uh, in, the in the structure of the probes. Um, the second question from Ulrich was, um, or Uli, uh, was um, how can I uh, or how can I create the probes for my plugin? Is there something required uh, in the probes, uh, 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 not in the probes, in the plugins, so that the probes work? No, there is no such thing particular required in the plugin. You should already know that uh, what uh, what can I say? What detail you want to collect about your plugin, and how you want to do that, and then you can simply implement it uh, with simple. Right, writing a class and using a Java code. Is it possible to dry run a probe on your plugin, or do you need them to be available in the system and to have the system run it on it? So, can you do a lab test but, uh, of a new I'm probe? I'm not very sure about dry run because uh, to test the probe, I usually write the test cases. Just uh, re recreate the scenario that is already existing in your plugin. So I think writing test cases will suffice. Maybe the vendors can say more about this. All right. Okay. Because uh, Uli is maintaining several plugins, and and it's really a useful feature to help and guide uh, uh, plugin maintainers. Are there other questions? Uh, I've seen people raising the hand to ask questions during the presentation. Don't forget that the way to ask question is either via the chat or via the Q&A. Uh, Jean-Marc, do you want to, do you want me to share just a few additional information about the, the pops? Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so, okay awesome. So just a few, uh, few additions on that. Uh, the pods are only a part of the plugin L scoring mechanism. So um, the pods are just the part which is gathering data, quality data about the plugins. And then another part of the of the platform is about scoring things and like computing uh, scores out of this information. So while it is possible to run probes on a specific plugin, it's a little bit of a, of a hacky situation, but it's definitely possible. Uh, running the pods only gives you data. Uh, it only extracts data out of your plugin. Uh, and then there is the other part that you need to run, which is about computing a score uh, for that. So I guess the, better, the best way for that is to reach out to Adrien, uh, possibly on Gitter, there might be a channel for that uh, if you want to do something. Uh, as per the creating probes for specific plugins, probes are actually meant to be shared by all of the plugins. They are supposed to be like, gathering, collecting information out of all plugins. And then there is supposed to be a, a shared common approach to evaluate the plugin's quality. So Ulrich, if you have any um, any ideas uh, of quality metrics that should be added, uh, I'm sure you can create issues, raise, raise pull requests, or, or reach out on, on Gitter to discuss with Adrien, who's leading that project to integrate additional probes, but they wouldn't be just for your plugin. They would be for all of the plugins. OK, thank you. Uh, I will ask uh, Jakruti to stop sharing her screen so that I can finish, because we're over time. And um, I, I hate uh, that. I'm just going to share the screen for the conclusion and we're going to see there it works so this brings google summer of code 2023 to an end uh, uh jacruti and vandit has still a few days uh, to complete things and tidy things up uh, still a lot of work to do Oktoberfest is a good opportunity to help there so um, it was a great experience. 
uh, a journey and the journey is more important than reaching the end because you never reach the end. And so uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a great adventure. It will probably be the last one is lead, mentor, uh, lead uh, org admin uh, for me. Uh, we're going to uh, build a new org admin team for next year. I will stay around. Uh, just for full disclosure, I'm going to retire very soon. And uh, my wife doesn't want me to spend so much time with computers and work-related uh, things. But I'll stick around. I, I like what we've been doing here. So we're slowly preparing with a new org admin team, uh, preparing Google Summer of Code 2024. So the Jenkins project attempts to apply to the program. In order to apply and uh, be um, uh, credible for that, we need mentors and we need project ideas. And this, this is what we missed the most uh, this year. It takes a lot of work. Uh, it is gratifying, but it's a long run. Uh, and we need people and we need a team uh, for that. There were some good projects with a lot of people that worked on the project that we had to cancel um, very late in the preparation because we didn't have the mentorship for that. And we owe that to the people, uh, the contributors that want to work on that, that they have a correct and good uh, coaching in the project. So this is, it's really a call for action there. Project ideas, discussions, and so on will start uh, end of October, beginning of November, stay tuned. Uh, on uh, on the channel, uh, listen. Uh, there are documents uh, explaining uh, what, how, read everything that has been published in all the recordings we made for the 2023 campaign. A lot of things are there uh, to be uh, learned. So stay tuned, listen. Uh, and for community members that want to mentor or have project ideas that could be a good fit, uh, reach out uh, to uh, the org admin team through the various channels uh, that are available. Couple of resources here. Um, look at the Google Summer of Code meetings. We had a lot of fun. So don't uh, stop all on the stupid jokes that I made during the numerous meetings uh, we had, but there's a lot of things to learn uh, in there. Um, important event that we're going to hold with the Jenkins uh, community is Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest is um, a good event if you want to learn what contributing is. Uh, read, uh, there's a lot of guidance available there. Uh, people from the community should be available uh, uh, to help you. Good way to learn. This is the way Jakruti started uh, uh, last year, for instance. Other people also learned it that way. We have also DevOps World Tour uh, going different places around uh, the world. Uh, and uh, you can have a discount code if you want to attend it. And last but not least, um, there is, uh, and being Belgium, I'm proud to say that, we have the open source uh, conference, FOSDEM, that will happen beginning of February in Brussels. Uh, it's a free conference. You just need to get over to Belgium and find a place, a couch to crash on somewhere. Food and the rest we're going to supply. There's plenty uh, of that around there. It's a great experience. And we're probably going to hold uh, contributor summit uh, for the Jenkins community there. So uh, these are the upcoming Jenkins uh, event. Thank you very much. 
I'd like to thank uh, the contributors, personally thank the contributors and the mentors that participated uh, with us org admin uh, to make this a successful year, an interesting human experience. Uh, I wish you all uh, a nice and continuing journey in with Jenkins and in your professional career and hope to meet you again in the community. Uh, there's a lot of work to do in Jenkins, but also other open source projects. So we're way overboard. So I fear we won't have time for additional questions. So the only recommendation I have is other questions about Google Summer of Code 2023, 24, other events, Hacktoberfest, uh, go on the various uh, chats and channels uh, uh, that we that we mentioned during the presentation. Thank you very much for attending, um, and uh, have a nice rest of the day where or wherever you are around the world. Bye bye, everybody. Then. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.